Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Hey guys, Amber here with A Meeple Family, and today I am very excited to be doing a walkthrough on this new game coming to Kickstarter called Trailblazers. The designer of Trailblazers is Ryan Courtney, who also brought us Curious Cargo and Pipeline. And Trailblazers is being published by Bitewing Games. This is a game for one to eight players, and it plays in about 30 minutes. And the age recommendation is about eight years and up, and I would definitely agree with it. I have an eight-year-old, and he was able to play this with ease. So before we head down to the table, let me give you an overview of how the game works. Players are going to compete by using trail cards in order to create loops that circle back to their base camp. There's three different types of loops and base camps. You have hiking, biking, and kayaking. Now the way that you earn points is only on those closed loops. So though it is tempting to try to build a really long trail, if it doesn't circle back to the base camp, it doesn't count at the end of the game. When it comes time to tally up points, you're going to look for icons or what they call trail markers on your closed loop trails. And we'll go over what this looks like in more detail, but I just wanted to give you kind of an overarching view of how this game scores and what the objective of the game is. This game also comes with two expansions, so we will touch on what those are, but I'm primarily going to focus on the base game so you can get an idea of how it plays. The expansions that are included are the animal expansion as well as the adventurers expansion. And both of these expansions simply build off of the base game, allowing more scoring opportunities and a little bit more complex strategy. And for all my solo lovers out there, Trailblazers also does incorporate some solo modes as well. So without further ado, let's head down to the table and look at how Trailblazers plays. Now for this example, I'm just going to set up a two player game. Before I dive into that, let me briefly go over the components that come with Trailblazers. Up here at the top, you are going to find six different animal meeples. These do not come into play unless you are playing the animal expansion. So for now, we're just going to leave these at the top and I will touch on them once I talk about the animal expansion of the game. And in order to play the adventurer expansion, you're also going to have these meeples here, which I will touch on as soon as I get to the adventurer expansion. But for now, let's go over the base components of the game. Because this game can accommodate up to eight players, you are going to have have two decks. Each deck contains 135 trail cards for the game. If you're only playing with two to four players, you just need one deck. But if you're playing with five to eight, you're going to use both decks. For this example, we're just setting up a two player game, so we'll just use the one deck of trail cards. You're also going to find eight sets of four player cards. These help us identify players throughout the game so that they can claim different goal objectives. So for our two player game, I've already gone ahead and selected two sets of four, one for each player. When setting up the game, each player is also going to get one type of each base camp. So again, we have kayaking, hiking, and biking. In order to start the game, we're also going to select two of the in-game goals. These are going to have a white background, so you'll just go ahead and shuffle and randomly select two of these for the game. You're also going to select two end game goals. These have a green background. These will be claimed after all four rounds of gameplay. So once you've randomly selected two in-game and end game goals, you're ready to begin. In Trailblazers, each player will create their own display using their personal three base camps. To get started, each player will receive eight trail cards. The game is played over four rounds. For the first round, players will look at their trail cards and select one of their starting base camps to build off of. For instance, this player may want to start with the bike shop. They will then attach two trail cards from their selection of eight to the base camp. Now, before we start placing cards, let's quickly go over the card placement rules, which are actually really simple in this game. You have to place cards orthogonally. They cannot be placed diagonally like this. You're also allowed to overlap trail cards like this. At times, you may also find that not all of your trails match up with one another or are the same trail type, and that's okay. Now, there's two things that you cannot do. You cannot overlap camps, okay? You cannot put things over top of your base camp. And as we talked about earlier, you simply can't add things diagonally. They have to be placed orthogonally. And those are the card placement rules. So just to review, during the first round, you're going to get your eight trail cards, choose a base camp, 
to start building off of and play two trail cards. After you've completed this, you will take your hand of six cards and pass them to the player on the left. For the next turn, you will now have six cards and you will place two more trail cards into your own personal display. At the end of this turn, you should have four cards. Now, you will take those four cards and pass them to the player on your right. This is gonna be our last and final turn and you should have four cards that have been handed to you from the player on your left. Go ahead and play two more trail trail cards. At this point, you should have one base camp and six trail cards attached to it. You should also have two cards left in your hand. At the end of the round, these two cards will be discarded and a new round will begin. Gameplay will go on like this for four rounds. During the second round, you'll go ahead and pick one of your remaining base camps and play another six trail cards. During the third round, you'll put out your final base camp and play another six trail cards. And during the fourth round you'll have no base camps to put out but you will still play your remaining six trail cards so at the end of the game you should have three base camps put out and 24 trail cards so now that we have a good idea of how the game plays over these four different rounds where we're putting out base camps drafting these trail cards to create loops, let's talk about how these loops score. Now there's multiple ways to score points in the game Trailblazers. You can score points based on your closed loops, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But first, I wanna go over these goal cards here that we put out at the beginning of the game. There's two types of goal cards. There's these ones with the white background. And these are in-game or during-game goals that you can accomplish. And there's three levels of scoring you can get six points, three points, or one point. So at the end of any turn, players may claim achieved goals by placing their unique player card, remember each player will have four of these, onto the highest unclaimed slot. So it may look something like this. Now, what if there is a tie and at the end of a turn, multiple players have acquired the same goal? Not a problem. If multiple players achieve a certain goal during the same time, players simply overlap their playing cards and each player will achieve that highest unclaimed spot. So once a goal is achieved, the player can remain there permanently. Even if later my loop is disrupted or whatever the goal condition has changed on my personal play area, it doesn't matter. I can still receive those points and my player card can stay on that goal. So that is how the in-game or during game goals work. Now let's talk about the end of game goals. And these are the ones with the green background. These also have three different scoring options. We still have the six, three, and one, and you're still gonna be using your player cards to claim those different score values at the end of game. So these are gonna come into play at the end of that fourth round, and basically each player is just gonna assess their personal play area to see if they've completed any of the end game goals. If they have, they will place their personal player card in the correct scoring position. Ties are allowed for these, and players will simply overlap as we saw on our in-game scoring over here. Now let's take a look at scoring loops. This is really the main way to get points in the game. Now keep in mind, you are only able to score completed loops. That means they connect and end at the matching base camp. And the way these loops are scored is actually by looking at what is referenced in the game as trail markers. So these trail markers will dictate how many points each loop is going to earn you. Trail markers include bridges, rapids, mud, rocks, tunnels. So let's look at a few here. Let's go ahead and just look at this little loop right here. It's all on one card. So I'm just gonna bring that up here so we can take a look at it. So here here, this would count as one point and this would count as two points. So there are two separate trail markers on this one trail. So this trail alone would be worth two points. Now, of course, the longer you get your trail, the more trail markers you are likely to have. So if I count this one up, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
12 points. So this particular loop has 12 different trail markers, giving me an additional 12 points. And of course, you would count up all of your closed loops in the exact same way. Now, there are times where you're gonna have a loop that maybe intersects itself or goes through itself again. If that does happen, the trail marker will be counted twice once for each time it is passed over. So that is an overview of how the Trailblazers base game is played. And basically those main ways that you can score points are going to be the during game goals, the end game goals, and of course those trail markers on the loops. And the loops do have to be closed, so just keep that in mind. So that basically takes you through the base game. So let's go ahead and move on to the animal expansion. So first of all, let's go over the animals that are included in the animal expansion. You're gonna have bison, an eagle, wolf, bobcat, bear, and moose. So let's talk about how this animal expansion works and how these animal meeples actually get on the cards. So when you're laying trail cards, you're going to notice that some of the trail cards actually have animals depicted on them. So when players play a trail card that has an animal and they're playing the animal expansion, they have the choice to add an animal to that trail card. So for instance, if it's my turn and I choose to play this trail card here, on my turn that I play that card, I have the option to add a moose, okay? So let's say that I choose to add a moose to that trail card. So there's pros and cons to adding an animal to a card. So let's talk about the con first and then we'll talk about the pro. So when you add an animal meeple on a card, that card may not be overlapped by other cards on future turns. It can be really helpful to overlap cards later on. Maybe you ran out of time and you need to take a quick detour to make sure you close off your loop. If there is an animal meeple on that card, you can no longer overlap that card or cover up that card in any way. Now the good part about adding these meeples to your cards is this, during end of game scoring, when you're counting up your closed loops, you will score points for each unique animal token on your trail. And you're gonna have this handy little score sheet that comes with the game, and it's gonna say if you have one unique animal, you get one point, but if for some reason your trail had six unique animals, which was one of every kind, you would get 21 points. So that's a quick overview of the animal expansion. It's really simple. Once you know the base game and you can add in that element of the game, it just adds a little bit more strategic thought into how you place those trail cards. And then of course, you can really rack up the points um, at the the end of game scoring, especially if you've been strategic about what trail cards you place you know, on your trail, because the more unique animals you see, the more points you get. So let's go over the very last expansion with this game, which is the Adventurer expansion. So in this final expansion options, players are going to have Hiker, Kayaker, and biker meeples that are actually going to be exploring their trails as they're built. So this expansion really adds a little bit more of like a real-time component because your meeples are going to be moving down your trail. So you need to be building your trail to ensure that your meeples have somewhere to go. This particular gameplay, the adventurer gameplay, we are not going to be using any goal cards. So these will not be used in this version of the game. Each player is going to Start with their matching meeple, right? So the hiking base camp will have a hiker, the kayaking base camp will have a kayaker, and the bike base camp will have a biker. Same rules are gonna apply for animal placement that we just went over, as well as our trail card placements. So during round one of the game, you are going to select your starting base camp as you typically would, and you're gonna play your six trail cards. During round two, when you've selected your second base camp to add to your display, you're also going to put the matching meeple on each base camp. For the adventurer variant of the game, the third base camp and meeple will not be used. So the way that we're gonna move our meeples is at the end of each turn, after the addition of our two trail cards, each player is going to need to move both of their meeples, three trail markers along the trail. When meeples encounter animal figures on your trail, they they will count as one of their three trail marker spaces. So for instance, after I've placed my two trail cards, I would then move my biker three trail markers. One, 
two, three. So I don't know if you can see, but I've got some rocks, I have my buffalo, and I have my mud. So my biker is just gonna hang out right here. Now in the event that your hiker, biker, or in my case, kayaker, cannot move their full three trail marker spaces or have reached a dead end, you're gonna take one of the campfire tokens and lay it flat next to the figure. This figure does not move again for the rest of the round, but at the start of the next round, they'll begin moving the figure again as normal. If your figure reaches its camp card during the game, it does not move again or earn more campfire tokens for the rest of the game. At the ends of rounds two, three, and four, you may place a campfire token standing up next to your figure. Unless, of course, it reached a dead end and had to camp early this round. Or if it reached the base camp and completed the loop. Otherwise, go ahead and place your campfire standing up next to the figure. The adventurer variant will end in the same way. After the fourth round, players will tally up their scores as normal. But there's a couple exceptions. Each standing campfire is worth five points. Campfires that were laid flat during gameplay are worth zero. Each unique animal type is worth two points. Another unique scoring element in the adventurer variant is that each trail marker between your final campfire token, which must be standing, and your base camp will be worth one point. It's kind of a quick overview of how that last variant of the game works, which is definitely one of the more complex variants because you're gonna have the campfire tokens, which are adorable. And in addition to those campfire tokens, you're also going to have your little adventure meeples that are going to be actively moving on your trail at the end of each turn. So every two trail cards you lay down, those meeples are moving and actively using your trail. And in addition to that, you know, you're still laying these animal meeples down as you can if they're shown on your trail cards. I really hope that this helped kind of give you an idea of how Trailblazers works. This is a really fun game. It is quick, it's easy to teach, easy to learn, and you know, as people become proficient in it, you can add the other elements like the animals and you know, the campfires and the meeples that move along the trail. I really love how the game gives you some autonomy to build out your trails as you see fit. It's not like you're just starting with three base camps. You get to kind of slowly build these trails and camps as your cards allow you to do so. If you have an outdoor lover in your life, this is a game I highly recommend. The quality of this game is outstanding. The components, the color scheme, all of the animal meeples that come with it are so fantastic. And I love how they incorporated that into building your trails and seeing these animals. And then, you know, as you get to that last variant, which is a little bit more complicated, you're adding in, you know, your, your hiker, biker, or kayaker is like kind of thematically setting up camp on these different trails. Just a very well thought out, beautiful game that is easy to get to the table, but also allows you to grow with the game. So as you learn the base game, you can slowly add in these other elements, really giving the game a lot of replayability and a lot of depth as you add in the different variants. And I didn't even really talk about the fact that this also comes with a solo component. So in addition to all of this gameplay, you know, there's this puzzly solo component that you can sit down and all these different I think I counted 20 different achievements that you can try to aim for and you know you can also just play to beat your high score so lots of versatility in this game such amazing components and such a beautiful well thought out theme this is a game I definitely recommend and our family has really enjoyed playing around the table well as always I really hope this allowed you to get an idea of how trailblazers works and if it's a good fit for your gaming table. We'd always love to have you give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. We'll see you later. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes